Without further ado, here are my top tips that beginners should know about WordPress. There are two types of WordPress that you may come across, WordPress.org and WordPress.com. And let me quickly explain the difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com so you don't go down the wrong road for what you're trying to do. It's really important to choose the right one to start with. This is WordPress.com. This is a website run by a company called Automatic and it's tightly controlled by them. So it's very similar to a Wix or a Squarespace if you're familiar with those other tools and systems. And it's not free anymore either. So they have a starter plan at five pounds per month and a pro plan at 15 pounds a month. And even with the starter plan, you can't install your own themes and plugins. So it's limited what you can do here. It is very simple to get started because you don't have to install WordPress. Then we've got WordPress.org. And one of the confusions around WordPress.org is that you don't go to WordPress.org to install your WordPress website. In fact, you may never go to the WordPress.org website to do anything at all. You actually go to your hosting company to install WordPress. And there are hundreds of hosting companies out there that will now provide you WordPress hosting. Companies like GoDaddy or WP Engine or SiteGround, or you may have your own hosting company that you've traditionally used, but there's lots and lots of them. Number one benefit of doing it this way is control. You will have 100% control of your website. So you can install any theme you like on that website. You can install any plugin you like on that website. You own the terms and conditions on that website. You can do custom development on that website. You can move your content to another hosting company if you want to. So for the vast majority of my customers, I recommend they use the WordPress.org software through their hosting company. WordPress.org is free software, so you'll never, ever, ever, ever pay any money to use the WordPress.org software. The money you'll pay is to your hosting company who are providing you that hosting service, but the actual software that's running your website, namely WordPress, is completely free and will always be free. So a very common question I get is how do they make any money? Well, they don't. WordPress.org is an open source project, which means that everyone that works on the WordPress.org software is a volunteer or is funded by their companies to work on the WordPress.org software. So throughout the years, thousands and thousands and thousands of developers have given up their time and talent to help develop the WordPress.org software. There are just two steps to get your WordPress website ready. You need to buy a domain name, which you can do through your hosting company. Here's an example through GoDaddy. You just pop in your domain name. I put in wpjamie.com, hit search domain, and it will tell you whether that domain name is available and then how much it's going to cost you per year or every two years. And then to buy it, you just click add to cart and then you buy it just like you would something from Amazon. And then step two is to install WordPress through your hosting dashboard. Well, it's super easy, nothing technical to worry about and only takes five minutes. Here's how you do it. You go to your dashboard, click on the WordPress logo, follow a few steps, click on install now down here, wait a few seconds. What's actually happening now, it's taking the WordPress software because WordPress is just software, it's files and folders of code, and it's moving those files and folders across to your hosting space. A bit like when you copy files and folders on your computers. Wait a few seconds, cross your fingers, say a little prayer. It'll say installation complete. Click on the link that appears here. Fill out this simple little form. Pop in your site title. Come up with a username and password that's secure. Pop in your email. Click on install WordPress at the bottom. Celebrate. <music> There are two main content types that you'll use with WordPress, posts and pages. Posts are really generally used for newsy type of content. You may use these in a blog or a news section on your website. Pages are great for more static type of content, more evergreen content. So classic page titles might be about us, meet the team, what we do, how to find us, privacy policy. When you first start building a site with WordPress, it will display all your posts on the front page. So it starts life as a simple blog. So if I create a new post quickly here and pop in some content of gibberish here and publish this post, you'll see when I go back to my front page of my website that that post will show at the top of the front page because WordPress starts as a blog. If you want to change WordPress from being a blog into a proper website, there's just a couple of steps. The first is you need to create your brand new homepage. So go to your dashboard, go to pages, click add new page, and we're gonna call this page home and then design your page however you like here. So there's another step we need to do. We need to go to settings and then reading. And up here where it says your homepage displays, you need to change it from saying your latest post to a static page and then select your new page that you just built as the new homepage. Now, when you go back to your site, that will now be the front page of your website. Clearly might need a bit of work. 
Adding a blog to your site is even easier. Here's how you do it. Click add new page, call the page whatever you like, blog, news, it's up to you. I'm gonna call it blog and click publish. Then go to settings and reading. And then in post page here, we're gonna set that page as our post page. That means any post that we publish will automatically drop into that page. We're also gonna add that page into our menus that we've got here. So I'm gonna click my blog page, add it to the menu, drag it up here, click save menu. Now go to my site and we'll see we now have a blog on our site that lists all the posts that we've already published. There are three key concepts that it's worth knowing about with WordPress plugins, themes and widgets. We'll start with plugins. Plugins are like apps for websites. Plugins let you add additional functionality to your website that isn't normally available within the core WordPress software. So they're a bit like apps for websites. So just like you install an app on your phone, it adds additional functionality to your phone. Well, plugins do just the same thing, but for websites. So an example would be an e-commerce plugin that lets you sell products through your WordPress website that you can't normally do with the core WordPress software. The beautiful thing about plugins is that there are 60,000 of them now and they are all free. So if you have an idea for your website and you find you can't do it in the core WordPress software, there is a high likelihood that somebody has built a plugin that does what you want. Even though plugins are great and free and super powerful, don't go crazy. There is a tendency when you start off with WordPress to install too many plugins. So always ask yourself the question, do I really, really need this plugin? Because plugins can slow down your website. Next up is themes. Themes are a bit like templates. They are where all the design is held on your WordPress website. There are thousands of themes that you can use on your website. Many of them you can also customize, but the key concept behind themes is they are a bit like skins to your content. So here on this website here, this is what it looks like at the moment. But the real beauty about WordPress is I can switch my theme, let's say to this one here, and all my content is maintained. All that's changed is the styling on that content. The Divi theme is one of the most popular themes, especially with beginners, because it has its own visual drag and drop builder. However, there is one major flaw with Divi, which is if you change your theme at some point in the future, well, your content will be lost. Here's a demonstration of that. Here's a website that's using Divi. I'm gonna go and change my theme here to a different theme and you'll see once I've activated that new theme and go back and refresh this page, I'm just left with a whole bunch of what looks like terrible code. I recommend that you avoid niche themes. For example, I've just done a search on best yoga themes and I found some results here. I've done a search on best church themes and I found a whole bunch of church themes. And I've also done a search on best pet themes and I found a whole bunch of pet themes. These themes are largely created because they know that people are out there on the internet searching for best pet theme or best church theme. And actually these themes won't be as good as the thoroughbred themes you'll find on wordpress.org for free. So my recommendation is you go to wordpress.org and use one of those popular themes on there. They will be better than these themes in most cases. <music> Widgets are super useful because they allow you to add content in just one place, but for that content to appear on multiple pages or all your pages. An example is here in the footer here, I have Meet the Team, Our History and Our Philosophy. And you'll see whatever page I go to, those same pieces of content are appearing on every single page. And that's because I've added them as widgets. They're very simple to use. They just use blocks. So you just go to Appearance and Widgets and you'll see these footer widget areas here. You put your content in there and that piece of content will then appear on every single page, saving you the hassle of having to add that content in each time and to each page. If you are having a WordPress website built for you by an agency, then there is one super important question I think you should ask yourselves, which is, do you want control? Do you want control to change the design of your website in the future? And do you want control to change the layout of your pages in the future? If you do want control, or you can see in the future, you might want to have a rebrand or change the design of your website, then there are a number of things that you can build into your brief that will make your life so much easier. The first is I would avoid having a bespoke theme built for you. If you use an out of the box theme that you can customize, it will come with a whole host of options that you can change yourselves without having to go back to your agency and spend lots and lots of money with them to tweak the design of your website. Here's an example of the Bloxy theme and all the options that come with it where you can actually change the design of your theme. So you can change the fonts, the colors, the layouts, 
all within the theme customizer down here on the left. If you have a custom theme built for you, the likelihood is it will not come with any of these options, so you'll be stuck to what you get. If you want control over the actual page layouts, then ask your agency to use the Gutenberg block editor that comes with WordPress. Then you'll have complete control to change the content and the layout of your individual pages. There is quite a bit of confusion out there about the fact that we have a Gutenberg plugin, but Gutenberg is also part of WordPress. So to clear that up, a quick explanation. Gutenberg comes as a plugin, but the plugin is always a few steps ahead of what comes into core WordPress. So if you want the latest and greatest functionality that comes with a block editor or the Gutenberg block editor, then you can add the Gutenberg plugin to your website. However, you don't need to. If you are just using WordPress, you will be using the Gutenberg block editor, just a slightly older version that comes within the plugin. And then finally, if you see a website out there on the internet that you really, really love and you want to find out how it was built, you can now do that with this website called wpthemedetector.com. You just go to this website, pop in the website address of the website that you love. This could be a competitor's website as well. Hit return and it'll trundle off and it'll tell you the themes and also the plugins that that website is using. That's wpthemedetector.com. So that's my top tips for beginners and stuff you need to know before you crack on with your WordPress websites. I really hope you found that useful. If you did, if you can hit that like button now, it'd be amazing because it really, really, really helps spread the word of the channel. And as you may know by now, every time you do hit that like button, our cats get a little treat. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos from me, just hit that subscribe button now and you'll be notified every time I release a new one. Keep well and I'll see you soon.